I greet you in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. It is the 1st of May, uh, 2023, and it's just after 8 o'clock in the evening here in South Africa. Uh, I've, I'm, this is going to be another installment, uh, part 3 of my uh, series on the romance of biblical chronology. Uh, it'll be another section. There will be a fourth video as well. I was going to try and get it done in three videos, but uh, the amount of detail that I need to cover in this in this particular video precludes uh, me from getting it done in in one. So I'm going to split up uh, the the remaining section of the chronology into two two videos. Uh, just a recap: um, we've been looking at the the book written by. Uh, Reverend Martin Anstey in 1913, or published in 1913, called The Romance of Bible Chronology. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, Martin Anstey is the only person that has been able to successfully put an entire chronology together exclusively from the Bible, all the way from Adam through to the, uh, to the, to, to the time of Jesus Christ, and whereby we can uh, not only prove the absolute uh, correct years in which the events occurred uh, throughout the Bible, all the major events, and the time of the kings, etc., and judges, uh, but also we can prove without a shadow of doubt the year in which Jesus was born, baptized, and crucified. Where others have failed and come unstuck in various areas, uh, Martin persevered and found the, discovered the various links, the various bridges, that our Lord provided for us to be able to bridge the gaps that others ran away from. So uh, all credit goes to our Lord Yeshua, uh, Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ, and for having given Martin the, the insight and the wisdom to be able to put this together. Unfortunately, the church has largely ignored this work and have uh, continued relying on... Uh, profane chronology, extra-biblical sources for an understanding of the timing of events and as a result they haven't been able to correctly interpret uh, some of the prophecies and some of the times of the Bible, in particular Daniel's 70 weeks. So we're going to continue in this video, I'm going to carry on from where I left off in my previous three videos. So if, you, if you, this is the first time that you're watching a video, I'd highly recommend that you first watch part one and part two on my channel so you will find me at this channel and uh, I'm trying to keep the videos as short as possible so that uh, they're digestible and uh, not too overbearing uh, the last one went, I'm trying to keep it around an hour mark this last one part two did go a little bit over and uh, this video I'm going to just do a smaller section and try and keep it to that hour or maybe even just below an hour. So if you haven't watched part one and two, I'd, I'd recommend you do so, because you may uh, not be able to pick up all the nuances uh, that I'm going to share in this next part, part three. There will be a fourth part, because I'm not going to get to the end of the chronology in this third part. Uh, but I'll cover that in a little bit more detail later in the, in the, in the, in the video. Oh, last time we ended up at around about the Exodus, uh, the time of the Exodus, and that's where we're going to pick up now is uh, the time of the Exodus, and then that will lead us into the 40 years in which they were in the wilderness, and we'll be looking at that in a fair amount of detail. Uh, following that was the time of Judges, uh, referred to as, as um, so the, the overall period, uh, as he referred to as the, the period of theocracy. After the theocracy comes the time of the kings of Israel and Judah, and that we'll cover in the next video. So I just I just want to cover this particular issue because there's quite a bit of detail, and it's quite uh, I, I, it, it does get a bit complicated, and I don't want to um, scare off people um, to not to get, be willing to to look in at the details. So I'm going to try and go through that as methodically as I can without getting too technical and hopefully not losing the audience uh, but at least leaving uh, the listener or the viewer with a clear understanding uh, of of how the chronology uh, is put together post Joseph's period and uh, at least up to the end of Judges 
and then we'll pick up. But there's some very exciting stuff in this section. We actually get to learn that not every year is counted by the Lord. There are some years that he would regard as uncountable. <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. Yes, they're counted in terms of uh, we lived through that period. Or certainly they're part of the history. But there are numbers within the Bible that exclude certain years in the count. And that's what I'm going to touch on. And I believe that that is an indication. I've long maintained that the Lord doesn't count new moon days uh, in the month. That his month comprises of 28 days. That's four complete uh, Sabbath weeks. Each Sabbath week comprising of six days of work and one day of rest. Uh, making up a perfect month of 28. And he does not count uh, in his reckoning the new moon days, the days when the moon is dark. And that way of thinking, I think, is expressed in in what I'm going to show you in, in, in a time period during the time of Judges in the history of Israel, where there are certain years that he didn't count. And a number is expressed in the, in his, in the text that excludes certain uh, years for a reason. So that's, that's something that I believe is a key to understanding uh, the way the Lord thinks uh, and the way he counts in certain instances. So uh, uh, that's very exciting. In the next uh, video when we cover kings, we'll be looking at the different way in which Israel counted their, the years for their kings versus the way Judah counted their years for their kings. And it's not the way most people believe or have been taught is the case but that's for the next video all right so let's let's kick off uh, from the birth we, we we ended up last time with the with joseph uh at the death of joseph and we we, did, we discovered that the time period and we were able to determine that the time period between although it's not given in in text we were able to determine from the information and the data provided that the distance, that that the number of years between Joseph's death and Moses' birth was 64 years, and we were able to establish that Moses was born in the year 2433 since Adam and Ham. So, from picking up from there, the calculation is relatively simple. We all we know most people understand fairly clearly that Moses. Uh, had lived 40 years he was 40 years old when he uh, he killed a an egyptian slave driver and he had to flee from egypt and he was 40 years old and he fleed he was out of egypt for 40 years and he returned and stood before pharaoh at the beginning of the the exodus story at the beginning of the 10 plagues when he was 80 years old so it's a fairly simple calculation from when he was born. We add the 40 to his flight, and then we add another 40 to the Exodus, to the beginning of the Exodus story when Moses was eight, 80 years old. So we uh, we know that the Exodus uh, occurred in the year two, 2,513 since Adam. Uh, and that, and well, what Anstey's added in here, that... Uh, from the death of Joseph to the Exodus story, so this now would be the 64 years plus the 80 years of Adam, which was, was 144 years. Okay, I'll just go on to read it. That it is uh, definitely stated that Moses was 80 years old when he was when he and Aaron spoke to Pharaoh. And Aaron, by the way, was three years older than Moses. Uh, spoke to Pharaoh, and as the narrative is continuous, with no note of time to indicate anything to the contrary, we may conclude that the ten plagues took place immediately afterwards and that the exodus was accomplished that same year. Um, and this is, is confirmed by the fact that uh, one and a half months before the completion of the f of 40 years in the, in the wilderness, Moses died at the age of 120. So they were 40 years in the wilderness and exactly 40 years later Moses died so there was a very small period there was there was not this fact confirms that the the gap of time that it was immediate from the time that he stood before Pharaoh uh, to the actual exodus occurring was a, a relatively short period of time okay so that was so that's fairly straightforward the next section of the of the of the chronology is really just understanding that and proving 
that the, the time in the wilderness, the 40 years in the wilderness, was in fact exactly to the day 40 years. Now the text doesn't exp uh, specifically express that, but when we, when we, when we read uh, the, when we read the accounts and when we add up the the months and days uh, of data provided, we can determine um, for a fact that this was in fact the case. That from the very day that they left in the middle of the first month to the very day that Joshua arrived in the promised land and they. Um, s celebrated the Passover in the Promised Land, in uh, having just crossed over the Jordan, was exactly to the day, uh, 40 years complete. And that's what Ansley really tries to cover in this particular section. So let's get in into that. As it says in chapter 13, we uh, reach the conclusion uh, that the narrative of Exodus 1 uh, 6 to 12, 40, 41, covers a period of 144 years from the death of Joseph to the Exodus. We have now to show that the remaining portion of the Pentateuch, including the 15 days to the, the morrow after the Passover, uh, Zavi Nisan, uh, Nisan 15, or the 15th day of the first month, uh, and Hom, uh, after Adam, two, 2,553, uh, of which details are given in Joshua 1, uh, one uh, verse 1 to Joshua 5, 10, covers a period of exactly 40 years. The events of this period of 40 years are detailed in the following tables. Okay, so this is, we're just going to go through what Ansley put together here. He says, from the Exodus to the erection of the tabernacle, um, in that would have been a year later after having exited, was from the 15th of the first month in the, in the first year when when the, when they arrived uh, from the exodus uh, to the wilderness in in sin um, so so from the so we're just breaking the down months by months now so from the 15th day of the first month in the first year uh, they were they arrived in the wilderness of sin okay uh, Sorry, they arrived in the wilderness of sin on the 15th day of the second month. So that was one month. Uh, then from the wilderness of sin to the giving of law in, in Mount Sinai, which was uh, also on the 15th day of the third month, was another another month. Uh, from the giving of the law at Mount Sinai to the erection of the tabernacle, uh, which was from the 15th day of the third month in the first year, to the first day of the first month, uh, of the second year was nine and a half months. So it's a fairly straightforward calculation. So that total period uh, in the story of the book of Exodus, in other words, the entire narr uh, narrative given to us in the book of, of Exodus covers a total period of uh, 144 years plus the 11 and a half months. So it was 144 years and 11 and a half months. It was the total time from the beginning of Exodus to the end of Exodus. Okay. So what he's done is we're breaking it down. We're going to look at each of the books in turn. How, what was the total period that each book covered? And then we'll be able to add up those periods and, and, and we'll be able to continue with the chronology uh, of the 40. We'll be able to see what was the total time uh, for the, the from the beginning of Exodus to the entry uh, into the Promised Land when Joshua took them over the, the Jordan. Okay, now the next book we're going to look at is relatively short. Uh, the whole book of Leviticus, okay, was uh, from the first day of the first month. That's uh, at the, from the uh, which is an account in Exodus forty seventeen. Uh, but the, the, it switches over at that point into uh, Leviticus uh, to the first uh, uh, verse in Numbers, uh, which marks it as being the first day of the second month of the second year, was exactly one month. So, in other words, the whole of the all the detail that was provided for provided in Leviticus uh, covered a total time period within that book of one month. I hope that makes sense. So from the first day of the first month uh, in the second year to the first day of, of the second month in that same year, uh, the book of Leviticus was recorded. 
uh, or the detail that's provided to us in terms of those name that period was 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 a month so that book covers a month so we, we can get on to the next book and that is the the book of numbers and the book of numbers uh, is broken down as follows we know that from the first verse in numbers numbers chapter 1 verse 1 from the first day of the second month in the second year uh, so this is this will be that that was when the the census occurred at Mount Sinai just before this event uh, up to the sending out of the spies at Paran. Now I'm not entirely uh, in agreement with NC on this one, but let's just go through it. He's saying that okay, we've got 20 days from the first day of the second month to the 20th day of the second month, which is recorded in Numbers 10 and 11. 20 days. There's no argument that is 20 days. Although it's not 100% clear that that the 20th day is in fact the day that the spies were sent out. Uh, I think he's got a little bit wrong there because there were two events that happened after the 20th day. Uh, first of all, they walked for three days, and then there was a seven day when Miriam was actually exiled or exited from the camp uh, and for disobedience for seven days. So there's this 10 day period after the 20th before the spies actually left. So the earliest that the spies could have actually have left was the end of the the second month or the very or the or very early in the third month of the second year uh, it doesn't really affect the timeline uh, too much at all in fact uh, it's just a, a case of understanding so uh, uh, what is recorded here what is ascribed to the events of the 20th day i don't agree with. that's what actually happened on the 20th day that's what i'm trying to make, uh, uh, make. but the 20th day is nevertheless recorded there as a point in time in in the sequence of events so and then from the 20th day of the second month the next event that is recorded is when miriam dies and miriam's death uh occurred on the first in the uh, third uh, does uh, the day is actually not recorded but it, um, in the first month in the 40th year so we'll we'll let's if we if we choose the first day of the first month we don't know the exact day it's it's not important in this time in terms of determining the total timeline of the chronology but uh we can see that if uh, that from that if this is the first month of the 40th year that means that the the this was just at the very end of the 39th Year. So the 39th year of wandering in the wilderness had just been completed when Miriam uh, died. Uh, so if we look at uh, when, if we go back to, to the, the first event for, for Numbers, which was the first day of the second month, uh, to, to this end of the ninth, we, we can, that's, that's one year. So the first day of the second month is basically a year um, and a month so if we take 39 minus a year and a month we're left with 37 years and 11 months okay so 39 minus 1 will be 38 minus another month will be 11 months so 37 years and 11 months is ascribed to the period from the beginning of numbers to the time when Miriam died okay um, then it goes on to say that um, so from the death of Miriam to the death of A Aaron we know we are told that Aaron died on the first day of the fifth month in the 40th day in the same year so he died f four months later I, I, um, I don't agree with this three months and ten days because it's exactly from Miriam's death which we can only assume might have uh, happened on the f in the beginning of the on the first month we have to count the full month uh, it would be four months. Never, however, if you if you count this twenty days into this uh, three months and ten days, it's it's the same thing. Okay, so the net result at the end remains the same. Well, I, I believe that we could we could actually disregard this twenty days because this event is really from the beginning of numbers. In any case, uh, we would have a four month period here, which is that those two added together, and then from the death of Aaron uh, to the address of Moses in the plains of Moab which occurred on the first day of the fifth month sorry which occurred on the first day of the 11th month in that same year well that was uh, from that was a period of six months exactly so from the first day 
of the of the fifth month when Aaron died to the first day of the eleventh month is exactly six months. So if we take that period and we add it up, the, we can come to the conclusion that the book of Numbers covers a period of exactly 38 years and nine months. Okay. So while I don't agree with the total breakdown of things, the, the net result is 100% correct. And we're in agreement. The next section is the book of Deuteronomy. So we need to look at a book of Deuteronomy, but go into a little into 15 days of Joshua uh, the book of Joshua up to where they arrived so it'll be the first five chapters of Joshua where they complete uh, where they uh, uh, actually uh, celebrate the Passover which would be the completion of the 40 years in the wilderness so that's what we need to now s determine that period so in actual fact, the, the completion in the previous book was on the first day of the 11th month in the 40, that was from Deuteronomy in the first chapter, verse 3 of Deuteronomy to conclude the end of that period for, for the book of Numbers. So it, it would also be the event that we can count from, from the beginning uh, of the book of Deuteronomy. I think what it might have been a better way to to do this whole thing would just be to go straight from I don't think it's necessary for the purpose of chronology to break down these these two events yeah we we know from the address uh to the first day of the of the first month in the uh 41st year uh that by by straightforward uh, uh, calculation, we can see that that is two months. Okay, so we don't have to, we don't have to prove that it was one month, one month. We know, so so far to this point in time, um, the to 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 um, to De Deuteronomy thirty four eight was a period of two months. Cool. So that's the whole of Deuteronomy was basically covered a period of two months. Then we've got half a month. We've got the 14 days uh, in in uh, Joshua, where they it gives a fairly uh, a detailed account of the number of days. But it all builds up. It clearly tells us that uh, they arrived and they celebrated the Passover uh, in the Promised Land. So we know that that Passover is on the 14th day of the first month. So we can ascribe a half a month. So the total period of Deuteronomy being two months plus the half a month uh, to, to bring us through to, uh, to to Passover is a total of two and a half months that we can ascribe to the book of De Deuteronomy. Okay, So now we're at the point where we can total up the, 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 the Exodus story. Uh, the, so the, we've got the, the events of Exodus, the Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy. We just add up all those period and it comes to exactly 40 years. So we've been able to prove that even though the, 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 it's not stated that they arrived at uh, the uh, at, uh, in, at the, in the promised land, in the land of Canaan, exactly uh, uh, 40 years after having departed, we can determine that is in fact the case. From a chronological timeline point of view, we can just we know. When the Exodus occurred, we've already established it at 2,513 plus the 40 years. We can now conclude that they they were in the Promised Land in the year 2,553. Right, and then from that point in time, they Joshua and the the people of Israel embarked on a series of battles uh, against the inhabitants of the promised land and the Lord gave them the victory and the time period given for that is not uh, we're not given a time period for that time uh, for the duration of those wars we have to derive that from the information that's provided for us in the in the book of uh, in the in, in in Joshua in the book of Joshua so that's what we're going to get into here uh, this and this uh, I'll just read it straight because I think Anthony puts it makes it pretty clear. It is it, it, in our last chapter we arrived at the end of the forty years in the wilderness, uh, the crossing of the Jordan, and the encampment in, in Gilgal on the fourteenth day of the first month in the year Anom uh, two five five three. The people came up 
out of Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and encamped in Gil- Gilgal, Joshua 4:19. And at that time, the children of Israel, who had been born in the wilderness, were were circumcised. And Joshua, uh, that's in Joshua 5:2. And for the children of Israel, walked 40 years in the wilderness, Josh, uh, and they encamped in Gilgal and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, even in the plains of Jericho. And they did eat the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover. Unleavened bread, cakes, uh, unleavened, uh, unleavened, unleavened cakes, and parched corn the, sa- the, sa- the self same day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. Okay, I'm just continuing on here with what Anstey has written for us. He says, The book of Joshua carries forward the chronology from the entry into the Canaan to the end of the seven years of war, uh, and at the conclusion of which Joshua divided up the land of Canaan almost amongst the twelve tribes. But uh, that's as far as it goes. That's as far as the chronology goes in the book of Joshua. Uh, we are told in Joshua 24, chapter 24, verse 29, that Joshua died at the age of 110 years. But it is not stated how long this was after the division of the land, and we have no information as to the date of birth, date of Joshua's birth. So that the date of his death is unknown. Okay. Fortunately, <laughs> the age of Caleb his partner, who was the second of the two uh, spies that gave a good report. Uh, However, his age is given, or rather it may be inferred or obtained by historical induction, and by this means we are able to arrive at a date of the conclusion of the war and the conquest of Canaan and the division of the land against amongst the twelve tribes, which Thereupon immediately ensued. Okay, so the division ensued immediately after the the after the war, after the battles. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna jump down. I think it's given to us here later on. I'm just gonna miss jump uh, uh, to to the point. Um, at this time, visibly in the summer of early autumn, okay, we're right, we're forty years. This is now the reading from. Mm, Joshua 14.7, uh, we are told there that 40 years old was I, and this is Caleb now writing, uh, well, speaking, in so to say, 40 years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me, Caleb, from uh, Kadesh uh, Barnea to espy out the land. Uh, so he was 40 years old when they went to go spy out the land, okay? And... So we know that they went to spy out the land in the uh, second or third month of the second year. So it was. So we can determine exactly uh, when Caleb was born. All we have to do is add uh, 40 years uh, to that date, and we can we can determine the date of his birth. Ah, uh, sorry, for, uh, 40. We subtract 40 years from that date, and we can determine the date of his birth, okay, um, and then it says, but it goes on to say, but at the division of the land, that's in, where it's recorded in Joshua 13, 1, 14, 5, 15, 1 uh, to 19, uh, 51, on the conclusion of the war of conquest, Joshua 15, uh, 14, 15, Caleb said, and now, uh, behold, the Lord hath kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years, even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now I am uh, this day four score and five years old. So I'm 85. Okay. Uh, just notice he talks about these 45 years. Uh, these 45 years are complete. It's not in his 45th year. They are complete. He is now already 45 years old. Uh, sorry, he's now 40, 40 80, 85, which is the original 40, plus 45 years later. He says, now at the time when the land is divided, he is now 85 years old. Okay. 
Hence, it follows that the division of the land took place at the end of the war uh, of conquest when Caleb was 85 years of age and from, so from his birth plus 85 equals uh, 2560, the year two, 2560 and that the war of the conquest of the land was a seven year war from the entry into Canaan in Anom 2553, see previous chapter, to the conclusion of the war upon which the land was divided up amongst the 12 tribes in the year and on 2560 and this period is seven years okay i do believe anstey made an error here and i'm going to show you where i think he made the error it's not seven years it's actually six however the t the net result of the chronological uh, calculation overall is unaffected by this error and the area we came in, we, we, uh, I'm just going to see, just want to highlight. Okay, so what he did here, he's now giving the detail of the seven years. He says the entry into Canaan, see chapter 14, okay, add seven years division to the land. Um, I just want to see, okay, this is where he add. this is now the detail of this, of the seven years, okay, Exodus. 12 uh, 40 41 see, uh, see previous chapter the spy sent out in in the second year after exodus now the sec the second year um of exodus in the second year it's not after the second year it's in the second year. so it's after the first year now we know the exodus started in in 2513 there's no debate about it so in the second year would not be 2515 it must be 2514 and that was that was an error I, I, I've, I've, I've checked this and I've gone through it a number of times there's no doubt in my mind uh, that this number should have been one one year less 2514 which would have been in the second year after the exodus okay and we know that in that second year of, of, of the exodus Caleb was 40 so the in fact Caleb would have been born in the year Two four uh, seven four, not two four seven five. Okay, um, we know that the so then we add eighty five years that uh, which is correct eighty five years to the two four seven four. Then this number should be two five six uh, two 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 five five nine, two thousand five hundred fifty nine years after Adam. Okay. Um, so if we take from the big uh from mm, so let me just get this okay we know that we have already established that the entry into canaan was at the year 2553 there's no there's no error there so this should be 2559 minus 2553 which would be six years okay for the war uh which means that they warred for six years and in the seventh year the land was divided up. Uh, but uh, you will see that this error doesn't affect the overall result. Okay. Uh, the next section we get into, and you will, it's in this section, it's in this part that, uh, that you will see that the net result is not affected by that error. And this covers the section, uh, what what he terms the Joshua Judges connection. In other words, the, from the book of Joshua to the Judges uh, connection, there's there's a time period uh, that is not defined. Uh, we're not given enough information in the Bible. Um, so it's the length. It's the determination of the length. Uh, it's, it's a, from the in other words, it's the length of, from the division of the land to the oppression of cushion so uh, the cushion cushions uh, uh, we know exactly when that occurred during the time of judges but we don't know uh, exactly well we we've got chronological information from that point of time but we don't know how many years to put between the division of the land and the suppression we're not given that information and um, and so it goes into a fair amount of detail of, of the number of people 
um, and the number of chronologists that have attempted to to overcome this problem. Okay, so he says the determinant of the length of this period has been a great puzzle to chronologists, to all of them except the author, the the author of the compilation Bible. It has proved to an insoluble an insoluble problem. Anyway, he goes into a lot of detail. I'm not going to read through all. I'm not going to spend too much time on the detail. That makes for extremely uh, interesting reading. But I will refer to this table and just to give you an idea. He lists a number of chrono uh, chronologists and the number of years that they ascribed to this period. And as you can see on this table, it varies anything from 11 years to, to 71 years and everything in between. And this includes... Uh, I mean, most of these names I don't even recognize, but it included uh, Eusebius, uh, Usher, that's uh, Archbishop Usher, Josephus is in here, Africanus is in here. All of these guys have had a stab at it, and all of them are wrong. Because <laughs> we've established what that time period is now, and uh, I know that these numbers are all wrong. So... That just gives you some idea of the difficulty of overcoming this particular problem and, uh, and, and the great variety of, 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 uh, of numbers that have been derived from the same text. All right. Ansley goes on to say, and yeah, he defines the solution to the problem. He says, the number of years in the so-called Joshua Judges chasm uh, from the division of land to the pressure of cushion is 13. Okay. And then he goes into explain how he gets that. Uh, and uh, uh, that number is uh, oh, okay. That number is supposed to be fourteen, um, and the combination of these, uh, uh, this together with that six or seven, fixes the overall problem. All right. So, um, so I'll get, let me just go along with him. So he, he says it's thirteen, and this is involved in the length of the long period. From the conquest of the occupation, uh, conquest and occupation of Hesh, Heshbon, Heshbon, uh, by Joshua in the first year before the entry into Canaan, so in the 39th year, Deuteronomy 2, it is uh, uh, to its reconquest or the, by by Ammon 300 years later, as stated in uh, Judges 11:26. Okay, so we're told in Judges 11:26. That Ammon reconquered this area of Heshbon, which was taken by the Israelites in their last year, in the 39th year. So we've got a bridge uh, to a time within the time of Judges, that, and it's a long bridge, uh, 300 years, that we can use if we, uh, we, and now he goes on to say, he says, now we know the length of every consistent portion. Of this period of 300 years except for the period from the division of land to the oppression of Kush and they amount all together so all the pieces of information in this 300 years amounts to a total of 287 years and therefore we can conclude by inevitable historical induction that the period must have con must have contained exactly the remaining 13 years so 13 years can be ascribed to the period because it's the only period in the 300 year period that we don't actually have a, 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 a breakdown of. So we can make we can account for these 287 years, but we, the remaining 13 years needs to be accounted for, and that is the period between the division of the land and the and the, and the pression of cushion. So that's how he, how he, how he solved the problem. We'll look at a little bit more detail in, into that, but let's just read it before proceeding to demonstrate this fact. The reader should glance at uh, the bird eye, bird's eye view of the content of the book of Judges uh, given on page 48 in volume 2 in the form of a table of the 12 judges and the one usurper king whose history is recorded in the book of Judges in uh, with, with the re, uh, respective years of servitude, rest, usurp, usurpation, uh, judgeship, and other particulars respecting the 12 judges. Okay, so what he's saying is go and have a look at the uh, volume 2. And so I've prepared this. So in volume 2, uh, which is, uh, um, I'm just going to come back to page uh, 90, uh, 
49. So volume 2 is, is the table. I did refer to this in the, uh, uh, in the, in the very first video. Uh, his book comprises of uh, uh, volume 1, which is the detail, and then volume 2, which is a whole lot of tables. And I'm just going to scroll through so that he, he made a graphical representation of the tables all the way from Adam to show the cr chronological information and makes it for a little bit uh, a, a graphical representation that makes it a bit easier to understand in many cases. And then he, right at the end, he put a number of tables together on terms of kings and the judges and, and a whole lot of information. But he's now specifically referring to the table of judges, which is on this page. Yeah, let me just get to that. Okay. Which is this page here. Now that's almost well I can tell you I'm fairly certain that <laughs> anybody who's on a um, cell phone screen will definitely not be able to read this and you'll have great difficulty reading this even on a PC screen. I can zoom in a bit and you can see that the, the copy is a bit difficult to read. Um, so what I've done is I've imported this table and I've re reconstructed it in um, in Excel. So I just you can just see it covers a period. It's got 25 lines, uh, uh, 25 line items, and three columns of which the first is 300 years, 450 years, and the 480 years. And I'm going to get into some detail on that particular score um, when I refer to the same table that I've reconstructed. So the, what I've done is brought this table into Excel and uh, where I can now make it more legible for uh, to be able to read again you'll you'll have to be on a PC screen to be able to read this okay so what I've done is I brought that in and uh, so now uh, we've we, we're going to refer to this table so you're saying you, you, this is a bird's eye view of the entire book of judges and all the uh, the information contained therein to understand it, it's it's important to understand the structure of judges. So I'm just going to go back uh, to let me just bring this thing. Um, so in the structure of the book of uh, judges, what we're seeing there is that uh, okay, we've got an introductory in the beginning of judges, and then it describes a process of what happened with the Israelites through this time period. Is that they were they fell into into uh, apostasy. In other words, they they did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Um, the Lord judged them by bringing them into a servitude uh, situation where they now were under the control of their enemies. Uh, so they they were servants to their enemies. They cry out to the Lord again, and and He delivers them. And He brings He raises up a judge who delivers them, and and He leads them. And then there's invariably a time of rest. A time of restoration and, and then all goes well until they fall into abs apostasy again and end up being in, an, in servitude uh, of the enemies again that crowds the Lord he delivers them through another judge and then there's a time of rest again in some cases and sometimes cases another judge immediately after that judge etc but the the pattern continues uh, and and when you read the judges you will see this in fact I'm just going to go let me just go to Judges and just give you a quick skim through. So, okay, chapter 1 is Introduction. I think chapter 2, we've got some more. Um, okay, that was where Joshua was 110 years old. Okay, so here we have the first instance. Um, so this was the first time that they, so they did evil in the, in the sight of the Lord. Uh, and Israel uh, served the Cushan, uh, um, the king of Cushan, uh, eight years. Okay, so, and then he raised the judge uh, after the cry out to the Lord. They cried out unto the Lord. I'm just highlight that there. They cry out to the Lord. He raises the judge, um, Oth Othniel, the son of Kenaz. And they he, he brings them out of that uh, servitude, and then they rest forty years. So for forty years they're out of, uh, run, and then they gain through the whole thing, and then they again do, did evil. Um, 
they end up being in servitude uh, they end up serving Eglon for 18 years Edu the judge Edu is raised and they they rest and they continue for another four score years so eight years and then the process starts and then they did evil again and the Lord sold them off into uh, Kabin, king of Canaan 20 years he oppressed them and uh, so we further down and then after then they came out of that and and they rested 40 years and so all these cycles they did evil again and he delivered them again into the Midian for seven years and so it goes on and on so you can see this is the cycle that occurred during the time of judges right throughout okay that's really the point I was wanting to demonstrate so what Anst has done is he's brought that into this process so it starts off um, uh, we've got the uh, just it, so we're going to deal with this 300 years first and then I'm going to deal with the 450 years which covers the information here and then there's a 480 year period referred to in the Bible so all these numbers are referred the first 300 years is, is referred to that's the, the period which um, Israel uh, controlled this area Heshbon uh, for 300 years from the first year before they, they entered into the promised land and uh, so we can actually piece things together so we've got that first year there then there was war they warred for seven years and I believe it's six uh, we've determined that the gap between the connection the division between the for the first servitude and a cushion which wasn't which is not specifically given to us in the Bible and we've been able to derive this time period so that the overall bridge period comes to 300 years so by by deduction or induction we, we've determined to be 13 I do believe that this is 6 and 14 though. okay if that is 6 and you do the same deduction you will come to a number here of being 14 but the overall result remains the same okay so it's a it's a, it's the, the fact that he accounted seven years for the time of the war is not going to affect the overall uh, chronology okay it affects one one line item date the rest remain the same so it, uh, it affects when the war ends and it, and 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 where the cushion uh, oppression started and that the cushion oppression uh, or servitude was one year longer than 13 okay so that's that's as far as that area would go and doesn't have an overall effect so then we know so the so so that was sorry that it was 14 years up to the the uh, uh, let me just rephrase what i just said there now so they were th from the division of land up to the f the first servitude um under cushion would have been 13 years and i believe it's 14 okay so then they were in servitude for eight years after that and that's recorded so these this number that was calculated that's recorded um, then they were in rest 40 years and then they were in the second servitude for 18 years then they rested eight years you remember i referred us uh, uh, highlighted those in in judges and so it goes on and he's recorded them for each of the servitudes and there were a total of six servitudes okay but but within this 300 period 300 year period we are at these these are the events that occurred so when you add up these numbers from there to there you see the sum is 300 okay so these events all add up to 300 okay granted that was the way the means by which we were able to determine the connection the connection period okay uh, but it is nevertheless this has to be 300 for that time period from from judges 11 26 uh, where we are told that it's 300 maybe we should just go there quickly uh, it is 11 26 um, so while Israel dwelt in Heshbon and her towns 300 years okay so she was dwelling them 300 years and that's why we know that we've got that bridging period and we know when they when the, when they uh, conquered 
Heshbon and we know when they lost it so 300 years later so we can complete the the chronology okay then we've got another piece of information that is related to this that helps to confirm um, and that is where Paul in the New Testament uh, wrote um, so I just want to go to to Paul wrote um, in Acts 13:19. Let's just go read what Paul wrote in Acts 13:19. Um, okay. So I'll read I'll read from 16. Okay. Then Paul stood up, and beckoning with his hand said, "Men of Israel, and ye that fear, fear God, give audience." In other words, listen up. The God of this of, of this people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt, and with a high arm brought them, brought you them out, out of it. And about about the time of forty years suffered he their manners in, in, in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he divided their land to them by lot. And after that he gave unto them judges about the space of 450 years until Samuel the prophet. And that should be till, until and including um, Samuel. And after the meaning is including, okay. And afterwards they derive, they, they desired a king and God gave them Saul, the, the son of Cis, a man of the tribe of Benjamin by the space of 40 years. So this is where now um, Paul ascribes that from the, that the time of Judges was 450 years. Um, and it's from the time where the land was divided. So if we go back to our table, this is now Paul's column. Uh, we do now go back to the division of the, we got the war was happened first so you can't count the seven years so and, and and he said about so he he didn't include this time period that we calculated so he's saying basically from judges so it would be from here so you'll see these numbers are exactly the same throughout okay but then of course this 22 and this 18 which was not included in the 300 um for reasons that uh, Anstey gives the reasons, he says uh, that the 22 was um, is not included um, in the uh, in the 300 years because in that year uh, uh, the judge uh, Jair's first year uh, Ammon uh, reconquered uh, Heshbon, so Heshbon was not in their control during this judge Jair from his first year. So for his whole period of 22 years, they were not. So you can't include it in the 300 years. And then the first servitude uh, is not because during the 18 years, Israel was not in position of the land in dispute. So they, uh, even though they were in servitude, they were also still not in control of that land of, of, um, of Heshbon. It only came into control after during the judgeship of uh, Jephthah, uh, so we, that's why those those twenty two and eighteen was not included in the three hundred and make perfect sense. But in Paul's account, you must include them because that he was there was a judge during that period. Uh, there was they were in uh, servitude during that time period, and then when you add up when you continue with judges and you bring the rest of the information through um, straight from judges you then find that th that period totals um, exactly 450 years. Okay, so um, I just want to read the conclusion that um, Anstey came to on that matter. Um, 450 years, okay. He says, um, Okay, let's just read what he said on the judges, including Samuel, the, the 450 years. He says, The following table exhibits the chronology of the period of the judges from the first servitude under Cushan uh, to the election of, of Saul. The years of the servitude, rest, usurpation, and judgeship are set out in the four different columns, and it has been seen that the four totals 
amount to ex that the four titles amount exactly 450 years. Saint Paul, in his address to Antioch in uh, uh, Pisidia, says uh, he divided the land to them by a lot, and after that he gave the, uh, gave unto them judges about the space of 400 years. Uh, until and you just uh, up to and including so he's just defining that the word about uh, up uh, was uh, the space of for until this word until actually means up to and including uh, Samuel the prophet and that was from Acts 13 19 and 20 and here again the minutest uh, accuracy is observed it will be seen that the number of years from the oppression of the cushion to the end of Samuel's judge, judgeship is not about, but exactly 450 years. He goes on to say that St. Paul is however quite right in using the word about, uh, and he was compelled to, to use it in order to be accurate, because the period of which he is speaking is from the period of the division of the land to the end of the judgeship of Samuel, it includes, therefore, the so-called Joshua Judges um, chasm of 13 stroke 14 years, and as as this is not as and as this is not specified in the text of the Old Testament and not included in the 450 years that uh, that are that are specified in Saint Paul, he, he is obliged to allow for this space, and he does so quite naturally and quite accurately. By describing this period as a period of about 450 years. Okay, so now yeah, what we actually have now is a, a New Testament um, witness, a New Testament record confirming um, some understanding and, and interpretation of, of, of Judges. So we can I explain the Bible is not, there's no contradiction in, in the 450 years that Paul was speaking of. We actually proved that Paul knew exactly what he was talking about. <laughs> um, he was obviously an astute um, student. Of, well, we know for a fact that he was an astute student of the word. All right, and then the next section is the 480 years that's mentioned in 1 Kings uh, 6 verse 1. And I think we just need to go there. Um, And it came up, and it came to pass in the four hundred and eight year, four hundred and eightieth year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month Zuf, which is the second month, that he began to build the house of the Lord. Okay, so what we told you that in Solomon's fourth year he began to build the house of the Lord, the temple. And that it was in the 480th year after Israel came out of the land of Egypt. So from the Exodus to, to the beginning of building the temple, according to this record, was 480 years. Okay. So when we go back to our chronological table, we can this now we're now dealing with the 480 year column. We have to now deal not with just one year. In this case, it was one year before the actual entry into the uh, into the promised land but in this column it's 40 years so it must include the entire 40 years in the wilderness uh, and these included the seven years for the war uh, we get this year this would have to be calculated we don't know that we know it must total 480 years okay so then interesting there's, we leave out the eight years. Why? Because it's, we will discover, and this is where um, many chronologers have come unstuck. And this is something that Anstey discovered. And it's such, I tell you, I, I, I don't know how, he, you know, it, it's absolutely brilliant. But anyway, you will see here that in every instance, where there was not a judge in control, or uh, in other words, uh, w w that the Lord had appointed. Okay, when there was not a judge in control or uh, over the people where the Lord had appointed him. In other words, during the time when the foreign kings were 
uh, were when they were in servitude to a foreign king. Okay, that's each one of these there, the eight years there, the second one, the eighteen years there, third one, the twenty years there, the fourth one, seven years there, and yeah, we have a uh, usurpation. This was a king that uh, uh, Ab Abimelech usurped himself, made himself king. Um, that was also not included. It's seen as an unappointed king. And then uh, we've got the fifth servitude, and uh, that's there. And then, of course, the sixth servitude, which was 40 years, is there. Now, when you specifically exclude those years, and all the other years remain exactly the same, you'll see these numbers are all carried over, except for the, uh, the those years are specifically listed, okay? Each one of them. And we add to that, remember that we're talking about Solomon's time, so we have to add Saul's reign of 40 years and David's reign of 40 years, plus, of course, the 40, uh, the four year, the fourth, the four years uh, of Solomon's reign up to when he began to build the temple. We know that this must add up to 480 years. And when you determine the difference between the 480 and all these others, you find that the difference is exactly the same difference as the 300 year difference. So this, this was a confirmation and this only can be achieved provided you do not include the years where his judge was not in control, which totals 114 years. So we've got two things that we've one we've confirmed that um, the 480 years confirms that the the 13 and this again you just recall that if that is six this would have been 14 okay uh, if that was six this would have been 14 he's recorded it as seven that's why it's 13 and 13 but nevertheless the two time periods the two bridging the 300 bridge and the 480 bridge confirm each other. Provided you understand that the Lord does not count the years where his judge was not over his people. So not all years are counted in that 480 years. The total period, in the actual total period from the exodus, from the beginning of, of the exodus to the time when the temple actually started being built in the fourth year of Solomon was actually... 594 years of which the Lord only recognizes in 1 Kings uh, 6 verse 1 480 of those years the other 114 years which are, which were under other kings he did not consider them to be countable but in the in the in the in the for the purposes of an accurate chronology we need to actually uh, we need to account for them we need to understand that they are there they were re they were real years so we must work f going forward with the 594 years but we can now account for all three of those bridges the 300 the 450 and the, and the 480 we understand clearly how they fit into the picture um, of this time of, of judges so I, I just I just sat back and I think this is such a, this is absolutely a marvelous piece of work and I tell you for those that are have taken the time uh, to watch this video or to read um, the book of uh, that Anstey put together his his chronology uh, which is a tiny tiny little number of people in the world you you those that are, that are understand this are amongst an extremely small group. In the world that will be able to explain the true meaning of those of those numbers of the 300 and the 450 and and know that the chronology is actually complete and be able to tell you exactly what the time period was where all the others came with the period for anything from 11 years to 71 years we know it exactly it's either well 13 or 14 one of the two and still has 13 I believe it's 14 but nevertheless, we know what that number is. Okay, so that's uh, that's that period of time. Um, Instagram provides a whole lot of other tables and looking at it from all different um, perspectives. The 450 years broken down in a different way. Um, 
and there's a few other tables before it. Uh, this was the another way to look at the 13 years. This is in determining the 13 years. I didn't go into you can, those tables are there. The information is there. I, I, I believe that one table that I've referred to is adequate to understand. It's just different ways to look at the same information. Okay. All right. Um, I just okay, but just before we move on to the next set, let's just deal with this section here. The 480 years of 1 Kings 6 1, and what Ernst is to say on the matter, he says the long period of 480 years mentioned in 1 Kings 6 uh, uh, verse 1 is has occasioned a considerable amount of perplexity. Some uh, 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 chronologists like Usher have adopted it into their chronological system and thereby uh, invited. Uh, um, they thereby validated their entire scheme from that point forward to the extent of 114 years. In other words, uh, uh, a chronology like Usher, they used the 480 years in their chronology, which means that the, their chronology was out of uh, out of sync by the total of 114 years, which is the number of years not included in the 480. Others like Jackson, Hales, and Clinton regard it as a forgery um, foisted into the text and rejected it altogether. So they rejected the whole 48. Others again have not only accepted the number of 480 as authentic and, and bent the chronology of the Old Testament to make it a, uh, accord with this figure, but have even ventured to ventured upon the task of correcting St. Paul and in uh, um, Amended the text of the New Testament, Acts 13, 70 20, in order to bring it into into accord with the 480 years of 1 Kings 6 1. So, and it goes into a lot of detail on, on how various people have dealt with this particular problem. But I think that the, what the gist of the, the story is here yeah, that uh, all, all chronologists up until Anstey have basically. Uh, manipulated the the, the account uh, to to fit their uh, agenda, or uh, to come to some some form of conclusion because they weren't able to f to understand the the truth of the matter. And I think this this discovery ma makes Anstey's uh, uh, um, work in the biblical chronology of particular importance and makes it stand out head and shoulders above everybody else. I think that's the point that I really just wanted to, to bring in, in terms of that. Okay, so we're at the point now where we can actually con continue with the chronology. We can now bring all of these numbers together. Um, we know that this is, uh, so the first servitude under cushion uh, from chapter 16 okay we know that that should be uh, uh, all right so that, that, that's 573 let me just get to this uh, I just maybe I must just go back because he added the 13 years uh, the, he, he added the 13 years uh, to to the number 2560 so remember he, he recorded seven years so he came to a conclusion of 2560 I believe that should be two two five five nine. Um, I wonder if I shouldn't just go there quickly. Um, yeah, there it is. Okay, so he came to a conclusion that it was after the seven years was two five six zero. Oh, he added the thirteen years, so it comes to two five seven three. I believe that this should, number should be two five five nine, and that this number should be fourteen. But the net result will remain. That the beginning of the first servitude on the cushion remains two five seven three. So the overall effect of the chronology, just two numbers, just one number changes. In fact, this number changes instead of two five five uh, two five six zero should be two five five nine, and the rest of the chronology remains exactly the same, in my view. And I, I, well, if anybody can see that I've, I've, I've assessed it incorrectly, but I don't think I have. I think that that, that, is, uh, that was a genuine error that, um, that, uh, that needed, needs to be straightened out. 
Okay, so getting back to the chronology, we can now continue from that. So 2573 is absolutely correct. And we can add all the other numbers, the eight years of servitude, the rest of 40 years, the next servitude of 18 years, and then the rest of 80, then the, then the servitude of 20, and then the rest of 40, and so on. All of these numbers straight from, uh, from, from the uh, Book of Judges can be added into the chronology. And we come to, uh, then of course, we, we've got the 40 years of Judgeship of Eli, and then we've got the judgeship of Samuel, Samuel, and that's 20 years. Now, this, again, is another one of those times, points of contention and misunderstanding in, in many ways. And just plain and simple, trying to read too much in the text and not reading it for what it is. And Anstey straightened that out. So, um, we're going to, that'll be the last thing we're going to deal with, is this Eli-Samuel connection of 20 years. And then that will bring us to the, pretty much the end of this uh, third video. And we'll uh, continue with the Kings later. So he goes on to say in this, re okay, we now approach the discussion of another chronological problem of almost equal difficulty and complexity as the one which has given rise to an equal number of divergent in interpretation or rather guesses at truth. There being no direct statement as to the exact length from the period from the death of Eli to the end of Samuel's judgeship at the election of Saul. The determination of the number of years in this period, which coincides uh, exactly with the administration of Samuel, is however quite simple and quite decisive. The administration of Samuel occupies the internal uh, the interval of those 20 years mentioned in 1 Samuel 7.2. This interpretation is necessitated by a proper understanding of the structure of 1 Samuel 7. And then he goes into a detail of understanding the structure of 1 Samuel 7. And I'm going to leave that to you as the reader to go into in detail on that. But this result is obtained from a close from a close attention to the structure of the chapter, it is obtained from a careful consideration of the statements made in the text itself, and it may be accepted as a true ex exposition of the author's intention and meaning, but it does not stand alone. It is corroborated and indeed necessitated by the figures uh, given by St. Paul in Acts 13, 19, 20, in which he states that the period from the division of the land up to including Samuel was a period of 450 years. The word about is introduced to cover the period of division of land up to the oppression of Christians. So we can see that th although there's much debate about whether it's 20 years or not, there's no doubt at all that it must be 20 years. And if you understand the structure of, uh, of Samuel, uh, uh, 1 Samuel 7, you will come to that conclusion, and you must come to that conclusion in order for St. Paul's 450 years to be true. If this number changes, that number cannot be uh, cannot be true, and we know that that number is true. So we are, yeah we have a, so that's where St. Paul has helped us. So each one of these columns have been absolutely indispensable in confirming this number of 594 years for that total period. So now we can, so we've got to, to the end of, of that particular section and uh, I'm going to, to stop at that time because this, this now brings us to the time where Saul comes in uh, and, um, um, so, and, and the time of the kings um, of Israel and eventually the kings of Israel and Judah. And that is another very interesting um, uh, path to walk. I think, uh, I hope that you can see why when you get into the intricacies of, of, of what the Lord has provided for us from a chronological data in, within the script, when you start getting into the, the nitty gritty of these things and you start analyzing these things and, and, and there are very few people in the world that have mastered this. In fact, as far as I'm aware, there's only one that I've come across that has been able to master all of them. Uh, there have been some that have got some of it right and some of it wrong, but overall, Anstey has been able to get it so largely correct 
up to this point and I've, well, I've been to the end of it and I can assure you the rest of it is correct as well. But it's interesting to see how the Lord has put this together. And if you're prepared to spend the time and the effort and uh, and to dig and to dig and to dig, the information, the information is there for us uh, to be able to prove that the Bible has got a chronology for us all the way from Adam to Christ uh, for us to know not to have to refer to a single external uh, reference for our timeline. So with that, I'm going to now sign out.